So uh, let me go through the math. This is one of those things that um, once you see it, I hope um, you know, it makes sense to you and you can maybe even do it for yourself later. But the first time you see it, it's kind of hard to figure out all the right steps because it involves some uh, less motivated steps. So let me uh, work through that. So for the bit, you need to have two sources of oscillation. So this time I'm only going to deal with the function of time. Uh, it makes sense because when I hear sound, I only care about one location, location of my ear. So I don't really have to think about the whole wave as a function of space. I can just reduce it down to, I only care about oscillation in one location. So I have two functions, f1 as a function of time, f2 as a function of time. And both of these, I can describe them as some periodic oscillation. So they have some amplitude times, let's call this cosine of omega 1 t. So this is the angular frequency of this oscillation. In, our, in the example we are using, omega 1 would be 2 pi times 500 hertz. That, everyone understand why I have this 2 pi here? Yes, angular frequency versus frequency. Yeah. Okay, uh, wave uh, oscillation two would be the exactly same functional form. In fact, uh, for the perfect um, kind of wobbling here, cancellation you see here, you want them to have exact same amplitude. So same amplitude times, I guess it could be sine, but I'm going to make it cosine to make it easier for myself. So cosine of omega two t. And in the example you are looking at, omega 2 would be 2 pi times 505 hertz. Okay. Um, I'm writing the numbers down here because for this um, beat to be very noticeable, it's actually important that these two frequencies are slightly different, but also only slightly different, that they're very close to each other. If, you know, if it was 500 and 1,000 hertz, you would not hear the same thing that we were hearing just now. So, um, so we are going to try to look at the result of interference between these two. What do you do when you say two waves or oscillations are interfering? Like what's the mathematical procedure you use to get the result? What's the combined effect of F1 and F2? Asia? Yeah, just add them. Uh, superposition principle. Remember that we give it a fancy name because it's the simplest mathematical operation there is. This is even simpler than an average. If you're averaging them, you now have to divide by two. This is like, uh, uh, like what other mathematical operation between two objects are there that's simpler than addition? Um, so. Uh, so yeah, we simply add them. Now, when I add these two, this is the result you see. So I can factor out A, and this is what you should see. A times cosine of omega 1 t plus cosine of omega 2 t. Now, which one of you looking at this form of a trigonometric function say, oh yeah, it makes a sense that this should look like this. No, not really, right? Um, so what this is describing is, it's uh, describing a time varying, um, or it's uh, describing an oscillation with amplitude that's varying as a function of time. Let me see if I can zoom in more. Oh, yeah, okay, I can zoom in more. Um, let me make it bigger so that I can, oops. Uh, all right, I guess I'm making the others smaller. Um, so the one way I can kind of describe this is I can say that there's a function then that describes this uh, higher frequency oscillation inside that's kind of like 500 hertz oscillation. Um, and then there's a sl much slower oscillation that's the envelope. So one way I can describe this function is as this, uh, a product of, let's say, cosine of omega fast 
T times the envelope. Uh, cosine or sine, doesn't matter. Cosine of omega slow times T. Like, does it make sense to you that if I wrote down a function in this form, that that does represent this? Yes? No? Right? This is the time varying amplitude. This is the faster oscillation inside the time varying amplitude. Okay. I'm looking for your reaction because the next, st next step we are going to go through is mathematically more complicated. If this portion doesn't make sense, then we should stop here and uh, spend as much time as we need until this makes sense. It, doesn't, it makes no sense for me to go into something that's more mathematically abstract when this doesn't make sense. Yeah? I just don't understand why it's multiplied. OK, so let me just try to describe the amplitude of a wave, something that's bearing as cosine, right? So let's say I have a cosine wave of a particular amplitude. In fact, that could, I could be trying to describe this. If I'm trying to describe this, that would be cosine wave of, of a particular amplitude. No? Cosine wave of a particular amplitude. Let's say it's a cosine of omega t times a. That a, a is my amplitude. Yeah? And if I'm looking at this wave, then that a is a constant. As I, uh, as I move across different time, um, the amplitude doesn't change. It's the same amplitude throughout everywhere, and, well, everywhere. So, so OK, this, uh, this describes this, the, just a single periodic uh, thing. The result of the interference is this. Look at what happens to this uh, oscillation as I go through different time. Amplitude increases, then decreases, and increases again, then decreases. So this A, amplitude, instead of being a constant, it now has to be a function of time. And what I'm saying is, all right, I'm trying to describe this amplitude as a function of time. That looks like something that's cosine or sinusoidal. Like imagine uh, following these peaks. Uh, so it's increasing like a sine of omega t. And then it's now decreasing. And then you have to kind of imagine following it through to the negative side. And then that's the other side of the sine. And then keep going. And when you come back all the way here, this is now one full sine wave of this A of, omega, A of t. Um, so, um, or you know, to uh, use the form that I was writing down, you would imagine a of t starting from this point right here. So this is cosine of zero. And then as time goes, this amplitude decreases. This amplitude decreases like cosine would. Eventually crosses zero, and then goes into negative. Now, if, when the amplitude is negative, you still have this oscillation because this can also be negative. So the product can be positive. Um, so it's down here, keeps going. Um, this is the cosine of minus one, that's I guess pi, psi, pi uh, phase later. And then you keep going. And then this comes back. This is uh, three quarters of a cycle. And then all the way back here, that's now one full cycle of cosine of omega t. So that's describing how this amplitude is changing as a function of time. So, um, so we are using amplitude as a function of time is, well, some fixed amplitude times cosine of however, uh, however slow that amplitude was changing. That's why I called it omega slow. T. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah, so, that, so that's the result we are trying to get to. And it's several steps from here to the result we are trying to get to. We want to get to a point where we, we, we want to rewrite this expression 
so that it looks like a product of two sinusoidal functions. So, all right, um, and let me show you the steps that's needed to get to that, uh, because the rest of the steps here, it's kind of an unintuitive. I mean, um, not you, if you can follow through the steps, then that's fine, but if you're not able to predict what I'm going to do, that's understandable, because uh, what we are now going to do is somewhat poorly motivated, as in, it's not clear what, what the reason is why I do the things that I'm doing. The only thing that hopefully is clear is that what I'm doing is mathematically correct. I'm not making any mathematical mistakes. So let me start out with this. Uh, I'm going to rewrite omega and omega 2 um, in terms of something different. And uh, that uh, motivation I can actually explain. Do you remember how we worked out the standing wave, um, standing wave interference? Like what mathematical tools we used to do this? Not double angle. Is that what you said? After what did you just say? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, we didn't use double angle formula, although it is related to double angle formula. Well, we used the trig identity, right? Yeah, we used the angle addition formulas. So the formulas we used were, you know, cosine of alpha plus or minus beta is cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus plus sine of alpha, sine of beta. And you know you can derive double angle formula from this. I would actually memorize this rather than the double angle formula, because you can go the other way. Um, sine of alpha plus minus beta is equal to sine of alpha, cosine of beta, um, plus minus sine of beta, cosine of alpha, right? Um, that's what we used, and after using it to separate this out, we saw some terms cancel out, and the, the term that remained was a product of like cosine of kx times cosine of omega t. Or it might have been sine. The point was it was a product of two, tr two trigonometric functions that described the standing wave. So that's what, the same thing is what I want to do here, except um, I'm stopped by the fact that this is a single term. It's not two terms that's adding. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to redefine two quantities so that I can express this as an addition, wait, no, as an addition and subtraction. So these are the quantities that I'm going to define. This you just kind of have to know. I'm going to define an average angular frequency. Define the way you would expect an average to be. Omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2. Yeah, that's average. And I'm going to define uh, what I'm going to call delta omega, but in a slightly odd way. I'm going to define it as omega 1 minus Sorry, um, I'm going to define it as omega 2 minus omega 1 divided by 2. It's this dividing by 2 that's a little bit odd. But that'll make my, my future expressions simple. So having written these two, wait, having written these two, I can actually write omega 1 and omega 2 in terms of these two. Let me write down um, the result and see if it makes sense. Omega 1 is equal to um, omega average minus um, delta omega. Omega 2 is equal to omega average plus delta omega. Convince yourself, add, so this is easier. Add these two, omega ones cancel. Omega two is omega two over two plus omega two over two, that's omega two. Steven, you had a question? Okay. Uh, when you're subtracting, it's the omega two that cancels, omega one adds. So you get this. 
But this is not difficult algebra. <laughs> you should be able to do this in your head. <laughs> I mean, you know, the why I'm defining this may not be clear, but you should be able to verify your, for yourself that this is true statement once these definitions are made. Once these definitions are made, then you should be able to know, you should know enough algebra to verify this for yourself. If you are not at the level, you really need to be practicing your algebra. It's, uh, if you don't, it's gonna continue to hurt you. It, not just this class, but in your future classes. So this is something that I'm going to do that, with no other explanation than this, will help me rewrite this so that I'll have two terms. And those two terms will make, allow me to use this. And I'm hoping something will cancel out and I'll get something that looks like a product of two trigonometric functions. So let's see if that works out. Uh, let me, I guess, use uh, this space here to write this out. So it's going to be the amplitude A, let me do that in different color, times, uh, let me write this, uh, I guess I'll just write it out, uh, cosine of, uh, I'm going to use this, so cosine of omega average T minus delta omega T plus cosine of uh, omega 2, so omega average t plus delta omega t. What? I finally have two terms that involve where the argument to the trigonometric function involves a difference and addition of two terms that's now beginning to look similar to what we did for standing wave. So let's continue. I'm going to use my cosine angle addition formula to expand each of these terms. And let's see what happens. Um, write this out here. So um, amplitude A times, um, Cosine of, um, no, let me write it out, um, omega average t times cosine of delta omega t, um, it's minus, so it's plus. <laughs> plus sine omega average t times sine delta omega um, t. This is the first term here. So this first term is expanded out as this. I need to handle the second term still. The second term is plus um, cosine of, so it's sum, so do the same thing as before, cosine of omega average t times cosine of delta omega t. And then it's plus, so it's minus here minus sine of omega average t times sine of delta omega t. And when you have written this all out, this is the entirety of the second term. And if you have an I4 algebra, if not, develop it as soon as you can, um, these two terms cancel out. These two terms look exactly the same as each other except for a difference in sign, plus and minus. So they will cancel each other out. The remaining two terms, well, they look exactly the same as each other with the same sign. So this is going to end up being equal to two times A cosine of omega average T times cosine of delta omega T. Um, which of these two is the faster frequency? The average frequency or the, um, or the, the delta omega? Delta omega is faster? Plug in the numbers, please. So that's why I gave you the numbers, so that you can actually try it out. So the average uh, frequency, well, add these two together, divided by two. 
So the average here should be equal to 2 pi times average of 5 of 5 and 5 of, oh, sorry, 500 and 5 of 5. That's uh, 502.5 hertz. What's delta omega? Yeah, 2.5. 2 pi times 2.5 hertz. Which is the faster frequency? The average, yeah. The average is at more or less at the same frequency at these initial frequencies we started out at. Um, so we have a word for frequencies like this. This is called carrier frequency. It's the same word as your uh, 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 cell phone carrier because those uh, uh, radio frequency or microwave frequency signals work with on the same principle as this. There's a carrier frequency of, I don't know, 2 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz for your phones. And the way data is uh, sent is by modulating that 3 gigahertz carrier frequency signal. And this delta omega is related to what we call bit frequency. So um, I need to, um, so delta omega is not the bit frequency itself, so I should uh, um, write down the bit frequency somewhere. So uh, bit frequency, wrong color. Bit frequency is defined as um, omega 2 minus omega 1. It's the difference between uh, these two frequencies. So if you want to express it in terms of delta omega, it'll be equal to 2 times delta omega. It's sort of um, this 2 here is there for the same reason that this 2 is there. Sort of. It makes your mathematical expressions look nice. But <laughs> otherwise, um, yeah, this two, this 2 is here, so this 2 it has to be there. All right, so, so that's the mathematical result. And this uh, confirms what you uh, already saw, that when you add these two waves, when you add, uh, um, well, let me, can I? I don't know if there's a way to distribute tracks. Can I? Uh, never mind. I, I don't know how to distribute them automatically. Um, so. When you add these two waves, then the resulting form is this, which uh, um, we said before that it looks like, this looks like a product of two cosine functions, or product of two uh, trigonometric functions, sinusoidal functions. And that's this result that comes out of this um, trigonometry algebra. Okay. Um, I guess I want to end with a, uh, one more demonstration of bit. Uh, when I was playing with this, I realized that none of this is actual physical illustration of bit. As in, even when I do this, like even when I pretend that I'm playing two sounds at the same time, it's not really because uh, within the software, the sound card you know mixes it, produces what was the mix, then render the track, and then plays that. So you might believe that, okay, all this work out works out mathematically, but what if this effect is not physical? Like if it doesn't happen really physically. So that's why my second laptop is here, so that I can actually generate sound from two independent sources, and you can hear that the beat actually happens. It doesn't happen as nicely as um, if they were you know, on the same computer, but it does happen, so let me Show you. So I can't really project this screen, but I can play the sound so that you can you are still convinced. So I kept the 500 hertz track there, right? So let me um, generate here a 505 hertz uh, track. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, play them separately so that you can hear the um, original sound. That's 500. This is 505. Doesn't sound all that different, right? 
Um, my computer has a weaker speaker, so it's not as uh, loud. But all right, let's uh, try playing them both at the same time. Do you hear the wobbling? Yeah. So, so that's the bit. Uh, that's what you hear when you hear two different frequencies that are different, but only so slightly. Like if I change this 500 hertz frequency to, let's say, one kilohertz, then it'll change a lot. So the tone is now, uh, not 100, sorry, 1,000. So this is the 1,000 hertz sound. Now, when I play them both at the same time now, like, I don't hear any wobbling. And the reason is, all this math, it still works out. But the difference is, instead of there being a clear, fast, and slow frequency, this will be like, you know, one is 500 hertz, and the other is like 250 hertz. So the, there's no clear way to interpret um, that as, yeah. So, all right, so that's, uh, I guess, all the time we have to spend on the bit. 